Well, mistakes happen. Well, guys, I got I had to change the battery. That's one downside to the setup is I don't know when the battery ends. I never heard a beep. Snow's got a little deeper. I don't know where we left off. So continue the ride and I guess magic of editing huh you guys won't know the battery uh whoa I hate roots on exposure with snow <laughs> ever looked at the Apollo 250 CC bike it's a Chinese bike with shipping I see there's a site for like 1300 bucks that you can get the bike from I don't know I've read a lot of reviews and people are like first off I guess people claim that 350 pounds I really have no idea and but people have pretty much have said it's been a pretty good bike like They've had a few things and you know they would recommend you know replacing the chain and tires and just stuff you kind of normally do anyways you know put a good like did chain on it put a good some good tires you know change out a lot of the bolts to better quality bolts and nuts but it sounds like people have pretty good like Ah, god damn. Oh, a root caught my leg. Oh, that hurt the knee. See, that's all it takes when you're riding. Ooh. Luckily, I kind of responded real quick when my velvet touched my foot, but still, he yanked it back. Oh, man. Well, anyways, it hurt, but uh, I'm to continue with my ride and talking. Yeah, so, anyways, uh,. Yeah, the Apollo 250 bike does not seem that bad. So I don't know what you guys think. Anyone watches my channel ever get one? Any experience with one? Yays, nays. And why am I talking about this? You have two bikes. Well, I was thinking about getting one so I could review it for you guys. Thinking about spring. And 1300 bucks. I mean, as far as bikes go and life, that's fairly cheap. And like I have said before, I, uh, I like giving back to you guys supporting me through Amazon and through YouTube and getting various products and obviously that would be the most expensive product yet that I would buy and ride and review and honestly probably just ride and ride and ride and see what happens you know I have other bikes if it dies breaks down you know might want to make sure to take like a second bike with me if I go somewhere and I'm taking that bike um, just, you know, so I don't ruin a trip or anything, but, you know, use it if it breaks as an issue. Obviously, getting aftermarket support is going to be like... It's going to be like next to nothing. <laughs> Woohoo! That's pretty deep uh, drift. 
Okay, that's where it goes down the pipeline. And I'm gonna stay up here. Doesn't look like people have come this way. But, uh, yeah, I would like to just review it. Bring you guys on for you, because there's a lot of people that are starting out and they don't need to go spend a lot of money. I, I know the argument is, well, you can go buy, find a used Japanese bike for 1300 bucks or 1500 bucks or $2,000, you know, around the same ballpark. So why not just go that route? But, you know, there's a lot of people that like having new, but I don't care what Japanese bike, I'm probably going to be doing some work on it for that price. You know, replacing things anyways. Um, so it's really not going to cost, say, two grand. It's probably going to cost two grand plus a chain, plus a clutch cable or, you know, changing the brake fluid, changing the brake pads and all, all your typical maintenance stuff right from the get-go. Now, you might say, well, Chinese bike, you're gonna have to possibly have that same problem too because, you know, they're made pretty cheap. Funny part is, and this is my belief, is considering like most of the Jap bikes are made by Chinese companies, <laughs> And KTM, I'm sure, outsources a bunch of Chinese parts that, you know, the Chinese obviously can manufacture to those tolerances, now to, to the quality specification. Now people say, well, yeah, but, uh, but it will cost them just as much as anyone else. No, not really, because labor. Labor is a huge chunk. Now, imagine going to get a deck on your house. I've gotten quotes from my house. Anywhere from $15,000 to $30,000, depending on the type of deck and this and that. Most of that chunk, chunk change was labor. Like, the materials were going to cost like five, but, you know, the uh, labor is going to cost eight. You know, for like a, that, that's more book for 13 grand, you know. Or it's going to be 10, you know, it might be $8,000 worth of stuff. And, or, so labor's always huge for whatever you do in life. And that goes with the manufacturing industry too, I mean. So when Chinese have an awesome ability to basically have real cheap labor, it drives prices down, uh, makes more profits. So they can produce the same quality bike, but you have to look at, you have to watch channels like ADV China and stuff, where they talk about the Chinese and their mentality and stuff. See, that's the problem. They're going to, like, if they run out of a part that was made to a certain specification, it's not beyond them to be like, well, we'll just substitute it with this part, with lesser known quality. So that's why you can get products from China that are good and then are very questionable or hit and miss because maybe they did that. You might have had good experience buying that Harbor Freight drill and the next person, six months later, bought one and it's just issues and they go get a new one and it has issues and, and there's just some big lot number that they switched out components because they need to fulfill the Harbor Freight order and they just freaking source from who from whoever from Mr. Wang in the back alley that says well, I, I have those not to your specifications but at least you can be shipping stuff that's all the Chinese companies care about is really shipping. Instead of saying, hey, you no, know, we take pride in our our quality and we'll get those and you know we're three months behind. That's what it is. You're just gonna be out. See they're afraid to tell the companies that. 
rightfully so because those big companies will be like those big companies will be like well i might try to go somewhere else and might end up with the same problem or they might not they might be like no we want good quality they'd probably be understanding actually most of them because they don't want to get a lot of returns either you know I don't know, the Apollo bike seems pretty interesting to me. It seems like it could be a good review, you know? I know, people would be like, well, it's probably going to end up like ever I did with that CSC bike, the RX3 or whatever it's called, and have issues. I don't 100% agree with that variety review i've never said never made that hidden but at the same time it was a good benchmark and probably the one of the few anyone has to go by but i would like to review one of these tiny bikes and just see i mean the online is like strong for this apollo 250 so it'd be kind of cool to buy one and I probably wouldn't play it or anything, but maybe that would be part of the process. Maybe I would uh, try to get it played it and see what happens. I mean, it might be just as simple as walking in and being like, here's my title. If they just give me a title, then I have a 250 bike and not have to do any inspection or have to do an inspection and go through the process of putting stuff on it. Of course, always makes the vehicle worth more. <laughs> But, being an unnamed bike might also help too, because when you go in, they be like, I have no idea what this bike is. That could be, that could be a plus or a minus, really. It could be a minus where it's not in the system, and you talk to the wrong person, and they just don't know what to do. You know, that, that, that tends to happen in life. You have, you know, <laughs> Should I go ahead and get an Apollo 250? I want to see how taxes treat me with YouTube and whatnot. And yeah, treat me good. I might see if I'll go ahead and do that. There's a big chance on my part. Maybe no one will care about the video. I already looked. There's some hokey videos out there. No offense to those people. But it's just, you know, like a kid on a, the Apollo 250 and it's not really a good video. He's like, there's some good unboxing ones, but you know, they're like, this is my first dirt bike, so they really don't know what to talk about. So I could do like, hey, here's the bike, here's the setup. But I could do a lot of videos just owning it in general, riding it, riding it on like this, Captain Jack, how does it do? How does it compare riding to my, like, something like a gas tank, which is really a trail bike. Is it really 350 pounds? You know, go get away. Um, you know, ride it how it is, out of the box, but you know, also common sense. Put some good tires on it and replace the chain. Probably pretty ASAP, just because you don't want a chain to break on the trail. And I don't think the bike will have enough power to break a good quality chain. It will just be, you know, making sure I don't break down. Maybe even, you know, go as far as putting like mooses in it or or uh, tu or tubeless or something. I'll run them in all my other bikes, you know. See how it goes. Uh, you know, and just using the bike. And I think that's what there's a lack of use. This is me using the, that bike and this is what it does, and people can be like, oh, it can do that, or it might be like, wow, no, you don't want to take it on single track, or I don't know, you know? So that would be the way to figure it out. Yeah, 
got the downside with the GoPro, the batteries don't last long at all. You get like an hour, at least with the Hero 3 Black. I wonder if they've improved that any on the newer ones. One thing I need to look up. I see they have extended battery packs, back packs so and stuff. Like ones that will last like six hours, 24 hours, and they have big. That might be something to look at if I got a six. And the thing is, I need to know if I can also plug in a mic. Otherwise, it kind of defeats the purpose, right? For a photo vlogger, you need longer runtime, but how am I going to accomplish that? Yeah, I have no idea. Here. I think I'll go around today. It's all slick. <laughs> the snow. I've been going up that ledge, but kind of silly to do that today. people pull off, right? That's kind of stupid. That's a ramp right there. Holy cow.